Welcome back. The immediate past governor of Lagos State, Babatunde Fashola, has finally responded to allegations that he approved a contract worth 78 million naira for the upgrade of his personal website. Analytic firm Budget had revealed that uh, just before he left office, the former governor approved a contract of 78.3 million naira from the state treasury, uh, uh, basically uh, awarding that contract now to... Um, someone to actually upgrade his site, uh, his personal website. Now, that revelation caused outrage among Nigerians who accused the former governor of financial recklessness and misappropriation of public funds. The revelation also prompted the Civil Society Network Against Corruption, a coalition of anti-corruption organizations in Nigeria, to petition the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, over what it calls uh, questionable expenditures of the administration of uh, Fashola. In a petition dated August 10th and addressed to the EFCC chairman, the group called for the probe of the controversial 78 million naira spent on the personal website of the former governor. Besides the money spent on the upgrade of the website, the group also wants EFCC to probe the 1.2 billion naira spent on the construction of pedestrian bridges along a Tiosai expressway, which it says did not specify the number of bridges. Other areas possible. Uh, of possible probe, I should say, include the 17 million naira awarded for the provision of a wall signage in three magistrate courts, 3.46 billion spent for the construction of a beach resort in Ilashe, and 61 million naira disbursed for a Range Rover SUV Toyota Hil and two Toyota Hilux trucks at the official as the official vehicle, I should say, of the chief judge of the state. The group also. Uh, is asking the EFCC to probe Mr. Fashola's spending of 85 million naira for the repair and replacement of street signs, 330 million spent on the development of the residence of Adejoke or Elukwe Adefulire, the immediate past deputy governor uh, of the state now, and 94 million naira spent on printer and consumables. Now, in his response contained in a statement he personally signed, the former governor admitted that indeed he awarded a website contract in the sum of 78 million naira, but it was not just for upgrade alone. The former governor said only 12 million naira was actually awarded for the upgrade of the site, while other services such as the handover countdown clock, mobile apps of Google for iOS, iPad, and for Microsoft as well as BlackBerry and the annual maintenance cost uh, of managing the site make up the total of 78 million naira. He said due process was actually followed before the contract was awarded and that the procurement agency PPA did not raise any objection as at the time the contract was awarded. The former governor did not, however, respond to other allegations leveled against him by the Civil Society Network Against Corruption. By the way, the controversial website is www.fashola.com. I'm now being joined by Mr. Debo Adenor, the Executive Director of the Coalition Against Corrupt Leaders, CACOL, another group that claims that its independent investigation showed that the 1.36 kilometer Lekki Kui Ling Bridge cost about 6 billion naira, another 25 billion or 29 billion, I should say, uh, stated by Mr. Fashola's administration. Mr. Adino, thank you very much for joining us on the program. It's my pleasure. You have um, read the response of the former governor uh, yes, to sir. the allegations, uh, especially that allegation now of uh, the website. That's you, right. you read his entire response and, that's of course, right. basically saying this whole thing is political and that some of you who are actually criticizing him and calling for his probe are paid to do the job you're doing. Now, just give me your reaction to some of what you have read, you know, about the governor, the former governor's response. First and foremost, thank you very much. Uh, I would have uh, loved the former governor to mention those who sponsored us to write a mm. petition. Because writing petition doesn't cost you more than the paper and the money with which you transmit it you know, to the addressee. So basically, what, do, what does anybody have to sponsor us for? And um, But if he wanted to accuse us of being sponsored, he should have gone back the memory lane. We started asking him questions as far back as... And I should quickly add that you group is also part of the Civil Society so, Coalition against... Exactly. Uh, we are part of Civil Society Coalition a, a network, network uh, against, against, against corruption. Yeah. So um, we work together. So we started asking him questions 
you know, uh, dealing with accountability probity since 2009, when we noticed that it's taking up jobs that are not meant for the state government, especially the reordering of Oshodi. When we examine the work that was going on, we appreciated it so much that, look, there, there, there was a need for sanity, you know, to govern in Oshodi. But then it should be a local government business. Why are you emasculating local government when you have your own job, your area of uh, specification that you should be busy with? Also, this is about motor parks and markets, and that is entirely local government business. Anyway, we're, we're, then, we're actually not talking about okay. Oshodi now. So, I, I want us to concentrate on his response. For instance, so, you heard what he said about the 78 million naira. Yes, um, we heard. Basically him. saying, look, it's not just that... that contract was not just for the upgrade of the website, exactly. that it included the maintenance of the website, the provision, I understand. Uh, yeah, the provision of apps and mm. others. Yeah, well, he didn't tell us that he needed to spend state's money on personal, you know, matter. First and foremost... But he also he, said, because you talked about personal matter now, yeah. and you, you mean the website is his personal website, but he said, well, that he actually used the website to govern the state. Of course, he here. used himself, he used his own clothes. He used his, I mean, several things that belong to him for the state, but he doesn't have to build the state for buying and like that. Of course, there are, there are so many things that the state has provided. But the state itself has its own website that are still running. You're quite right. Okay? We have several other ancillary websites that belong to several Absol MDAs. Absolutely correct. Now, why is not, a, I mean, Baba Today Fashola is not an agency, it's not a ministry, it's not a department. Why must you now name a section of state business as you that we quarrel with? Now, before now, he didn't even tell us that the website was existing. It's only the initiator that knew that he had that website. Now, how many people before last week knew that the, web the website was running on behalf of Lagos State for the negotiations? No, we didn't know. The so when the scandal broke out... Because the website actually has its name. He the has his name. Everything is about his name. Not nothing to indicate that he belongs to Lagos State. It's babatundefashola.com, not babatundefashola, governor of Lagos State. If they even added that, we would have pardoned him. But then, the contract was awarded by Lagos State. And the website of Lagos State says that the cost, contract was awarded at a cost of 78 point something point three million. million naira. The firm that put the website together said that they initially built 12 million, yeah, 12 12 5. 5, 5 billion naira, I mean, million. million naira, but they were eventually paid 10 million naira. And now the governor. Now, the first the question we asked that coalition against corruption, I mean, corrupt leaders asked, you know, the former governor that, where is the difference? 68.3 million naira. It, that must have prompted his response that, okay, all of these other things were included. But those were not contained in the contract paper as released by Lagos you know, he, Public well, Procurement. He, he said the Republic Procurement uh, Agency just captured it in a summarized form. If it is a summarized form, that is what we were fed with. We can't conjure information that is not provided. As a matter of fact, when he said a lot of things in his response, including how they manage Lagos funds. But when you get to Lagos State website, you won't understand how they are, the budget is, uh, uh, I mean, is uploaded on their site. They are quick to refer you to the website. You are not going to get anything from there. But the rule is that the budget of last year should have been ready even by this year. If it's not ready the same year, you can never get it. We made every effort to get it. They won't. Then we wrote them that, look, please supply us with income and expenditure account of Lagos State because it's supposed to be a public document and we have the right to know. They refer us to Ministry of Budgets and Planning. Minister of Budget and Planning refer us to the Attorney General of Lagos State, and they wrote us that we, because we initially wrote uh, 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 as citizens of Lagos State, then we now wrote under Freedom of Information Act. The Office of Attorney General wrote back to us that the 
act, the law of the uh, of the uh, of the federal parliament is not applicable in Lagos because Lagos the Lagos state has not domesticated it. We disagree with them. They challenge us to go to court. But I know, I mean, you know why they ask us to go to court. They know that they have state coffers to draw resources from to prosecute. There was something case. the governor said in his response yeah. that I want you to react to. He That's said, right. look, if he intended to cover up anything, yes. why then would he publish this thing on the website? He didn't publish. For instance, a 78 million naira on... Uh, he didn't you know. know that we are going to gain access to that website because hitherto, I told you that the website was not publicized, the, existing, the existence of the website was not publicized enough. And we, we didn't visit the website until the scandal broke out. We knew that a lot of cover-ups are going on, but there is hardly any way you can have access to it. Because everybody in the upper echelon of government behave mm. as if they are members of a court. They refuse to tell you anything. Even when you go there with a lawyer that, look, we, the, we reserve the right to know what is going on in our state, they will tell you, go to court. They, are is, they, they easily say that because they know they can circumvent the course of justice. I have no reservation in saying that because they have done it once. And that is why I was, going, I was taking you to the memory lane. When they refused to answer our questions in 2009, we put a petition together. We wrote the Lagos State House of Assembly that the House of Assembly should probe itself and probe the executive. They didn't respond. We wrote a reminder. Then they set up a panel that was eventually stopped by a Lagos High Court. Let me ask you this question. Uh, yes. One of the allegations you're leveling against the former governor now is that um, the cost of the Lekki Koyi Link Bridge is actually six billion and not exactly. the 29 point something billion naira quoted it's by. Tell me what, yeah, I, I, want, I want to ask you, what investigation did you do? How did you arrive by your six billion? Now, um, there is uh, a, an almost 10 kilometer bridge that was entirely on water in one of these uh, Asian countries. I can't readily remember the country now. It's the bridge, 9.8 or so kilometers of road, was done for $70 million. And it has ancillary bridges entirely on the ocean. By the time we now extract what it, that could have cost us per kilometer, mm. we discover that it, it wasn't more than three point something billion naira. Now, something like 3.8 billion naira when we calculated that cost. We now look at what we have in Ikoyi, Admiralty Road. It is less than, as a matter of fact, Less than 1.5, I think 1.3 or thereabout kilometers. Almost, it's just about uh, 800 meters of it is on water. How come will you now build it for 29.3 or so billion naira? But did it occur so, to you that the cost of construction in a country like China would naturally be different from the cost of construction here? Because in, in a country like said, China, the they would deploy their own local resources there, and that in your country, you would basically have to import all again the items no, no don't worry there is this construction going on on lagos ibadan expressway we calculated i can't remember vividly how much we i mean a, a kilometer cost uh, 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 i mean uh, the cost of one kilometer mm. on lagos that is supposed to be a minimum of three lane per side so meaning that six lanes the bridge is four lanes Okay, so the cost of Lagos Ibadan Expressway, including bridges and covert and everything, is less than um, two billion naira per kilometer. Okay, so when you compare what we did, yes, that is on water, you can add a margin of another two billion naira. Now, let, we took it as if it was as long as two kilometers. So if you add that margin that, oh, this thing is on Lagoon and, this, uh, and the cable and the rest of them, another two billion. It shouldn't have been more than six billion naira. Basically, also all, all you no did road. was guesswork. Listen, look, we, we you actually... You did not 
consult experts, for instance? Did you cons consult the, construction companies? We also companies, look at what does an expert do? Okay, they calculate based on the uh, on per kilometer. They calculate based on the terrain. No, well, now in Niger Delta, east west um, road no. is being constructed, and we also compare the cost of it being in swamp. I mean the swamp area and the rest of them. We knew the cost of that. We give other margins with which we arrive at our own calculation. Actually, we also took an expert. Unfortunately, it is not that we contracted him that he should give us papers and all that. There are experts that can also do quantity survey of what could have been expended there. And they gave us their cost, which is even less than what we calculated. But basically so, your calculation But is what we are saying is this. That project in itself, it is, is not our priority. Why should somebody do a cable bridge side by side with a Lekki Expressway and you told it even when you claim you did it from the budget of Lagos State? Meaning that people whose taxes were used, used. to construct the bridge are being made to pay again to use the bridge. Why should it be that you neglect Ikorodu, uh, Ekpe, Aja, back to Lekki Road? This is a section of the road where people who, from their sheer creativity, are any living for themselves. This is where fishermen are. This is where you have farmers. They, 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 they get their produce, from, they extract their produce from their effort. They don't have road to take it to the marketing places. So they lose a lot of resources through that. You do, and there are several aspects of it. So basically, we know that that is a misplaced priority in the fourth instance. Fought our calculation, if you like, but I, I want to challenge um, TV360. Go and hire an expert if you want to verify what we have done. Go and hire an expert, let them do the calculation. The highest amount that anybody has calculated the cost of that bridge was 9.3 billion yeah. naira. Now, if that were to be taken on its face value, it means that some money is still hiding somewhere, maybe, and that is maybe, in private pocket because we did we don't have any information. And Fashola was the governor at the time. The Fashola was the chief city. accounting officer for Lagos State by that time. And that is why he is the person to do the explaining. There are several aspects, I mean, several other aspects of what are being done that are not our priority. Lekki, I mean, uh, the Atlantic City is one of them. Yes, they are quick to say that, oh, Lagos State is private, not paying anything. Exactly, private, private sector uh, investor. So why do you have to hire or maybe introduce these investors into a non-priority area? It is a way of telling the poor in this country, and that is why we say that, look, the governance in, in, in Lagos State is elitist, is suppressive, and is draconian. Anyway, but um, f finally, just before I let you go, yeah. are you confident that the EFCC is going to address your petition? I am Because not, I know in the past, I'm for not instance, so confident. CACOL had actually had complaints. As a matter of fact... Under the civil society network against corruption. Even, or even us as a CACOL. Now, let me tell you, it is the frustration that we got from the anti-corruption agencies. They claim that in 2010, that they started. But this is a new administration. This is a new confident. administration. Maybe they will allow. The, but we have not seen the difference, you know, between the outgoing and they are from the same stock. And that is why we are saying that in order to have justice, even during the campaign, we said that everybody from the same stock of the past governor should not be allowed to govern us again. The that if there should be a change in the national, the change should percolate. To the very bottom rung of the ladder. Now we have we have been frustrated by EFCC. We remind them at least two times in a year. 
of the petition that is pending. Wow. And recently, after the exit of the former governor, we wrote them that immunity... The former president, you mean? No, the former governor of Lagos State, State. That immunity is no longer an excuse for you not to question and try Fashola. this gentleman. Uh, yes, Fashola. They have not responded to that. And we don't like it. And because of this frustration, that is why we went to town. We carry out research and we compare them in two, I mean, a volume book. We call Lagos Open Parliament, you know, an assessment of budgetary implementation in Lagos State. The first one was published in 2011, the second one, 2014. And they are there. And everything we complain about, we show the pictures, we show the responses from Lagosians, we review newspapers, we quoted newspapers, we review, there are newspaper clippings and all of them that are contained. We did bar chart, we did pie chart of all of the responses And you we did got. not get any reaction at we all? We have not the got a reaction Let's... and that is why we went on the streets. And when people say that, why don't you go there? I said, look, it is frustrating trying to get a uh, a member of the same cabal to be taken on by the same, a, an agency of the same cabal. They are not likely to do right. it. Yes, and sir. that is why we are saying that the People's Court is the only court that we dispense justice in a case like this. All right, Mr. Dinero, thank you very much for coming on the program and thank it's you very much pleasure. for your contributions. Thank you Let's for just hope that EFCC uh, does... Um, something different because i think it's a different we hope EFCC so now. we hope so we hope they will be empowered <laughs> it's they a will be strengthened EFCC now. At least they will we, be strengthened we can they see will be there. efcc working and because now. of the body language of the, <laughs> of the president of the president yeah well we'll take a short break now when we come back we'll continue this discussion with another guest every day every hour and every minute news break in nigeria things happen so fast it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them but that's what we do right here on DJ 360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. All right, welcome back. And if you've just joined us, you're watching DG360. I'm now being joined on the program by uh, the president of uh, the Civil Society Network Against Corruption, uh, Lanry Suraj. Uh, Mr. Lanry Suraj, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Let me just start by asking you, I believe you must have read the response of the former governor of Lagos State now over... Uh, the 78 million Naira website uh, controversy. What do you make of his response? Uh, I, um, thank you very much, uh, DJ. I, I think that response is actually um, very unbecoming of um, a formal governor. Uh, it's also um, very ludicrous that you have um, such responses coming from um, the highly, and I think, highly overrated um, governor Fashola. Um, or SEN or, or uh, formerly of Lagos State uh, and also um, a very watery one in terms of responding to very critical issues that are raised um, not only in our petition uh, also in several petitions that predated this one that just came out and then also uh, the substance of the issues so I, I think that that is highly um, unbecoming of, uh, of, uh, of a public office holder of that um, reputation. I mean, that is even talking about a senior lawyer for that matter. Uh, and I also consider it extremely um, irresponsible to have responded in that manner. But are you satisfied with his explanation now on this 78, on how the 78 million naira was spent on the website, that it was basically not just for upgrade, but included, uh, you know, apps for iOS and uh, other applications as well? Well, I, I think this is an afterthought. Uh, there's no way that can satisfy anybody. Um, the company who, which got the, um, the contract, um, I think we can look at that critically to the extent that, um, first and foremost, um, how much was eventually released to the company uh, the company Infotech also came out to say that um, 
we only got less than 10 million naira for the whole contract and that means that company was paid not more than uh, 10 million naira so let's take it for granted that included ios and whatever um uh, governor about the uh, uh, had said means both the ios and the rest of that um, which nobody can attest to the existence uh, other than the website and like also the company said what they did was just updating and up upgrading and then also maintaining the website for everything that they did was just for 10 million uh, for less than 10 million uh. so the question is where um was and to who was the 68 million naira released to there are quite a number of several others and, and i wish to also say that um that unfortunately um this is one of the reasons why um governor fashola uh, former governor fashola would behave the way he has been behaved there's been a huge um level of arrogance on the part of uh, his uh, his performance even in office and his utterance utterances uh, and um that is where it is very shocking when many of this information uh, are coming into the public domain. I, I can remember on a road in particular, um, Ikotui Dimo Road, uh, which the governor came uh, at, to the public to say the road has been completed and constructed. Uh, and we found that, that the road was actually abandoned. There was not even a mere grading on that road, not to talk of even uh, the completion of the road. And we wrote an FOI. Um, for over two years, Lagos State Government never responded to what happened on that road, on that road or until a petition was written to EFCC on that matter. That is still pending. But coming down to this issue, he has not in any way substantiated the argument. The company had said, we only got less than 10 million naira. As he told us, who got the remaining 68 million naira? So even if, let's take it for that, the, uh, the company with the upgrade and updating of the website got 10 million naira. Which other company got the um, outstanding 68 million naira, even if it's for iOS? Then the question goes to how much does it take to develop an app for iOS and Android? So we can then start getting into that argument. And for your information, a quick check will tell you, like Governor Fashola had about seven, several websites you know, to his name. I mean, doing what and for what? These are, for whatever it is, private websites, not public websites. It's a different thing where you're saying Tunde Fashola, like he has it, tundefashola.com, tundefashola.net, tundefashola.whatever. And the wife also has about five websites. These are private websites developed with Lagos State resources. That is wrong. It's a different thing where you say Lagos State Governor. Then we know that the incoming governor can then take it over. Then you can explain that way to be um, a public-oriented um, website and services, but not a tundefashola.com um, website. Now, I know you also raised uh, some other allegations against uh, the former governor because, I mean, in, in your petition to the EFCC, for instance, you talked about... Um, uh, the spending of about uh, 1.2 or 1.3 billion naira on uh, pedestrian bridges and that the number of bridges were actually not mentioned. In the governor's response, we, the governor did not actually react to uh, these other allegations. Uh, what, what do you make of that? And then these allegations and the petition to the EFCC, what do you hope to achieve? No, I, I, I mean, it's the same thing. Uh, like I told you, um, they had, they, Governor Fashola has not responded to the issues. He is only whipping up unnecessary and undue um, sentiments, you know. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's better for him not to have even come out with that uh, response that, than the way he did. And like I said, it, it is actually um, disappointing to quite a number of people who had some high order of respect for him. Um, there, there's no way. Th these are facts that were released by the public procurement of um, Lagos State. Th these are not from us. I it is there in the public domain. Uh, and what we have done, uh, because it is what many of them don't want to happen, uh, and that is why it is running um, from pillar to post. What we have done is to upscale that uh, from just mere reportage, like it used to be in the past, to convert it to um, a, a substantive petition to demand investigation, and that is what we've done. Uh, we've not even concluded that he actually um, misappropriated the money, but we have only said 
EFCC, can you um, help them out to investigate this matter? And if he's found wanting at that point, then it's, it's the law that needs to take his due course. That is the simple demand we've made. And like the one you said with the bridge, I just gave you an, a typical example with the Ikotui Idimu Road, uh, um, um, sorry, Idimu Ejibo Road that I mentioned earlier. These are one of several, several other allegations that are there in the public domain uh, that people have mentioned um, over, over a long period in the past. But I can tell you, the level of arrogance um, of um, Governor Fashola has actually um, taken him so far uh, because he, he, he comes across with this um, image of um, this infallibility uh, and then holier than thou attitude. One, one very crucial thing about this whole thing is the issue of timing. Why now? And it would appear the governor in his response is insinuating that this is all done for political purposes. That, you know, why... Basically, he was insinuating that this is basically done to stop him from probably taking up a position as a minister. And then he went on to say, look, he is not looking for a job, that he is taking a deserved rest, and that... Some of you who are doing this are basically paid to do this. Well, well it's his business and he's entitled to his opinion. Uh, as far as we are concerned, if he's unfit to occupy the position of a minister, why should he be there? If there are questions to answer before becoming a minister, then he should go and provide answers to the questions. And anybody would be paid to do whatever. He was paid to be governor in office. He must have been paying people to do things for him. He also must have also been finding... Um, also an opportunity to be minister before he could assume that people want to stop him from being minister. And I can bet you if he's given a ministerial appointment, he, he would um, gladly, that is if he's not been, or not been around for that, but that is his business. And those who are interested or competing for ministerial appointment, I, I can't, I'm not one of them. I don't belong to their political parties. I, I don't even know with whom is having the grouse of, of um, becoming a minister, uh, uh, as far as we are concerned. Once the issues are there in the public domain, like quite a number of them have also called to harass, to abuse, but they would have celebrated to the high heaven if um, the petitions have been written against members of PDP or those people in opposition. But as far as we are concerned, every public office holder is required or expected to provide answers to, you know, allegations that are brought in the public um, domain um, for, uh, uh, for their stewardship in office. So as far as we are concerned, he's entitled to his opinion. And this is one of the texts for the government of um, Governor Buhari uh, that he would have to move um, over and above, you know, uh, his political affiliation. In, in terms of prosecuting the war against corruption. And then we also challenge him. For those he identified as the sponsors of what we have done or behind you know, his travels, then he can also bring out information about them and see if we would not take them up with, with the appropriate authorities. Yeah. I, I mean, for, for us, it, it, it's the thing that we wouldn't, we wouldn't even shy away from doing. But uh, let, let me just quickly ask you, have you received a response from the EFCC? Has it... Uh written back to you saying it is going to um, in investigate, look at your petition? Oh no, we're still expecting, we're still waiting. It's still a fresh one. I'm sure that um, uh, the, the commission uh, must have received uh, a copy of the petition and well, uh, with the previous ones that we've written in the past uh, in which we've gotten a response, uh, it has taken like um, say, like two weeks or thereabout or more to get a response from them uh, in terms of inviting us to come and assist with additional information or even um, adopt the petition. So we're still looking forward to that. All right, Mr. Larry Suraj, uh, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for your thoughts. We just, um, we wait and see how this all ends. Yes, we're, we're still waiting. I mean, it's interesting. We need to assist them in actually creating the space for better and more open and upright people to serve in the government of, um, of uh, uh, Governor Buhari. And I'm sure that is why we are not having ministers now. The, the man would be shocked that many of those who have um, also come forward with this clean bill of health 
actually have questions to answer. So I'm not surprised that the, he has said the appointment of ministers won't be anything earlier than September. There are quite a number of that would be unfit to actually occupy political office. So basically, let me, let me just quickly come in there. Are you trying to say, for instance, that you are going to do the same thing for other former governors? Are we going to see your organization go after some other governor, former governors now? Oh, yes. Who may have Yes, questions. especially even of APC extraction. Especially, I mean, the moment we have, and we're calling on actually Nigerians and public officials, I mean, public civil servants and the rest, to make this information available. I mean, they have promised us change. This is a new um, political dispensation. There is a need to actually expose the atrocities, the fallacies, the hypocrisy of many of these guys. So it, this is the best time for us to do it. If we, if you want a change in the system, Buhari would easily also um, be trapped by these politicians who all have uh, their hands soiled, uh, and then also political godfathers who wants also their protege to be appointed in office. So this is the right time, actually, to assist um, the new government in, in terms of enthroning change, uh, and then also looking forward to good governance and consolidation of the democracy. You, you must believe in the anti-corruption program of uh, President Buhari then. You must believe it is going to work. No, I believe that Nigerians would be the one to make it work. It is not about Buhari, it's not about EFCC, it's not about Lamude. It's about Nigerians actually honing the process and the fight. All right, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for your time, it's Mr. Lamude Suraj. Well, that's it on the program. If you want to watch it again, it's simple. All you just need to do is go to our website, tv 360 com. You'll find the program and lots more there. You can also watch us on YouTube by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Uh, it's actually youtube.com forward slash tv 360 Nigeria. Or just follow us on Google Plus at tv 360 Nigeria. Or you could simply like us on Facebook. The address is facebook.com forward slash TV360 online. You can also follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at TV360 online. We well, thank you very much for watching. We're back again next week. See you then.